Let us now look at the functional architecture that is the suite of services which are offered as functions to execute important tasks in the domain of IPTV. So this involves essentially all the domains, but uh, we are interested in looking at what exactly is the relationship of IPTV with the engine architecture. So we'll start with three functional architectures, and then we are going to look at each of these uh, um, functional architectures from the functions viewpoint. This will take uh, probably uh, uh, this module and the next because we are interested in going into details in each one of the functional architectures um, functions. So uh, basically, the functional architecture is needed because it, uh, we need uh, the network functions to provide connectivity, um, IP address allocation, and um, uh, data delivery. Then we also need service functions, for instance, date, uh, uh, IP television uh, content to be requested, to be initiated, to be delivered under certain QoS. So all these come under the umbrella of service functions. So uh, primarily, three different kinds of functional architectures have been defined, and these are most natural. The first one is non-NGN based. When we say non-NGN, it means that any other uh, ITUT or uh, IEEE or um, uh, 3GPP standard implementation is non-NGN implementation. So if any one of these is used, then uh, uh, the overall engine architecture is not capitalized. So the next one is NGN architecture, but without the use of IP uh, multimedia subsystem, the well-known IMS. So that's the second option. And the third option is once we do not have uh, 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 neither of these, in fact, we have NGN and we have um, the IP multimedia subsystem all combined together, which is the best of all. So uh, let's start with uh, the background. So uh, essentially, the uh, architecture which is discussed here in detail is uh, NGN based IMS, uh, including. Uh, architecture. And uh, since the overall architecture is going to be such that it has to be backward compatible, so it is also generalizable for uh, uh, non IMS based uh, um, NGN uh, IPTV services. Uh, so uh, the IMS services, in the case of non uh, um, um, IMS based uh, NGN services, is provided through something known as a control functional block. Now, these are the uh, modules which are uh, uh, proprietary, uh, which are provided by different technologies. For instance, as I mentioned earlier, IEEE-based standard, uh, 3GPP, uh, and uh, ITUT, etc., ITF, etc. So you choose either of them uh, as long as it is not uh, um, IMS-based, uh, it is going to make use of some functionality. And that is what is uh, addressed here as the control functional block. So it means that if you want to provide IPTV services, those IPTV services will have to be provided essentially through some way, and those are the possible uh, control functional blocks which are integrated in this generalized architecture. Uh, so uh, the well-known uh, modules in the engine like network attachment and control function and the resource and admission control function uh, now, these uh, 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 functionalities actually are provided by the same functional blocks for authentication, address allocation, resource control, etc. So it means that uh, this architecture, the one that you're seeing right now, is quite flexible, um, which is going to cater for uh, uh, NGN-based non-IMS IP functional uh, services as well. Uh, for now, let's look at it uh, uh, one by one. So we have the NGN architecture in the middle. Uh, we can see the service stratum. We have the transport stratum. Uh, then on the left-hand side, uh, we have the end user functions. On the right-hand side, we have the management functions and the uh, IPTV content provider functions. Now, a, a lot of functions within uh, this overall figure, and even when they, within the NGN architecture, we have the uh, application functions, uh, we have the uh, 
service support functions and the service control functions. And here you see the uh, IMS here. And then we have content delivery function. And uh, then we have the transport function as well under the, the uh, uh, transport stratum. So it means we have got a lot of functions. All these functions can be grouped together. So the uh, headings that you see here uh, are actually the uh, functional groups, which you can say have associated set of services. So let's uh, start with the end user functions. So the end user function is actually the place from where special content request is initiated for IPTV. So uh, it can be uh, divided into uh, two functional groups. Uh, one is the uh, uh, IPTV uh, terminal function, that is the user equipment functions, and then the home network function, that is how the uh, user equipment is going to be uh, connected through some kind of gateway mechanism with the NGN uh, based IMS um, IPTV architecture. So as far as the IPTV terminal functions are concerned, these are typical device based functions which include uh, uh, taking the user click or user URL request. Uh, so it means a user clicks, a u it means it would be a control command, the system or the uh, end terminal equipment is going to take that command and it is going to interact with the application depending upon what particular command the user has given. Uh, so uh, it is also going to involve obtaining the um, service information, for instance, which programs are being offered at the moment. Uh, then a certain kind of uh, uh, encryption, decryption and uh, encoding, decoding is also required. Uh, and then once a user makes a request, a reply comes back. So that reply is then decoded and finally displayed. So end user functions are very important. The home network functions are essentially related to networking. So having uh, uh, connectivity between home network and external network and, and including all the required services, for example, address allocation, if NAT is being implemented and if the forwarding has to be done based on IP routing information. Then we have the application functions. Now the application functions actually sit on the uh, farthest end. It means the user now from the ITF has the capability to choose a uh, certain content. Now this content is there. So it means the application functions would, in, uh, would provide the user with the capability to select and purchase the content. Of course, this content will have to be provided to authenticated users and its execution is all dependent upon if the user has the uh, subscription uh, which is available. Uh, so it uses user profiles and metadata. For instance, user settings, what are going to be the global settings in terms of time zones, uh, the language settings, typical linear TV settings, the video on demand settings. If a user is interested in personal video recording, then PVR settings. Uh, and then a certain uh, a service action data. That is, if a user has carried out some action, uh, associated to a certain service, it ha it generates some data. So that data has to be recorded as well at the application. For instance, if a user pauses the video in the middle of, say, watching movie, then it needs to be bookmarked uh, so that a user can later retrieve it. Likewise, recording the contents by the user actually has to be done in a methodical way. So a list has to be maintained in what exactly a user is recording. So it means the application functions are also in going to be related to the content creation, con uh, sorry, content preparation, uh, it, its encryption, decryption mechanisms, and its overall protection so that uh, non-authorized users do not view it. 